Anghaseo, and welcome to the Busan Midnight Movie. I'm your host, Donald. Tonight's our second of three films exploring lockdown, with tonight's movie being about the last survivors of nuclear war in the year 2889. Don't know why survival and isolation are on my mind right now. Before we get to that, though, it's more of the great Alaskan mystery. In the last episode, Jim and Ruth escape their crashing plane by parachuting to safety. Jim finds the brigands' hideout and finds Dr. House engaging in some light bondage. He has to join Jim and the bosun, leading Jim to retreat to a natural idol to consider his romantic situation. Brandon, in a fit of jealousy, shoots him, sending Jim tumbling into the rapids below. And now, episode 10 of the great Alaskan mystery, Tricked by a Booby Trap. Welcome back! Tonight's movie is in the year 2889. Nuclear war wipes out all life on Earth except for a father and daughter in a well-placed house. Naturally, other survivors immediately arrive seeking shelter, and the father demands they all obey him because he was right about one thing once. And then everyone hangs out until the end of the movie when mutants show up and then leave. This is one of those apocalypse movies where no one's hair grows no matter how long they're locked down, and they wear the same clothes every day. Also, 2889 is never mentioned. And now, in the year 2889. Tonight's feature is the made-for-TV nuclear disaster film in the year 2889. Last time, in talking about quarantine films, I mentioned how horror uses zombies to explore the idea of contagion, but if we think about disaster as the cinematic metaphor that speaks to our current situation, we have science fiction's nuclear disaster films that this falls into. In response to the end of the world, movies like this or Romero's various zombie films see the ultimate threat not as nuclear war, but other people, other survivors, and that's the threat that must be addressed and addressed with violence. Right now we're in the reality of a global pandemic, and rather than the imagined anarchy of public violence, we have the actual anarchy of mutual aid. In fact, one of the arguments made for why Republicans in the United States started to respond to pandemic restrictions with violence was that this was not the apocalypse they were promised. The end of the world has come, and instead of a battle of all against all with the best armed man standing atop a mountain of corpses, folks played Animal Crossing and shopped online. All that survivalism LARPing was childish. In tonight's film, we see the captain become increasingly petulant and throw ever more dramatic tantrums as people refuse to fear the way that he wants them to, but the movie always imagines him as the hero because his position as the militaristic and patriarchal head is what the movie values above all else. Or it's a really cheap made-for-TV movie and I'm reading too much into it. That said, brace yourself for some terrible paper mache as we return to In the Year 2889. That was tonight's feature, In the Year 2889. Sorry, it's just incredibly dull. Here's a preview of our next film. Master salesman J.R. Bob Dobbs has come up with a revolutionary new form of underwear. Did you look over those briefs? Hell, of course I looked over those well, briefs. The competition will go to any length to steal his ideas, though, so he has to find a way to win outside the law. If you follow every law in the book, you'll be broke or dead in a week. Find out what happens in the corporate espionage thrill fest, The Last Woman on Earth, next time on the Busan Midnight Movie. Carol, take it easy. What for? I don't know. I really don't know. Last what? You mean there's more? Why more? Oh, this lockdown's going to end before the films do. Anyway, come Sunday dawn. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, stay safe, stay inside, and stay spooky.